Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The choir has already given us enough to reflect on this morning. How many of us believe that? God bless you, choir. Amen. Amen. How many of us have been blessed already? You said no turning back. And may we never turn back from the way in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So this month, the pastor already shared with us the team. And if you have been joining prayer meeting, honestly, I've been blessed. Because I realize that, you know, God's direction. God's leading come to us piecemeal. In prayer meetings, in Bible study, always pay attention. You know why? Because you may never know when God wants to drop a word that will change your life. Amen. So if you have been joining, the pastor shared with us the theme of the month, which is Jesus, the way, right? And we've been praying. In fact, the prayers we have prayed so far some of us might have already you know, put ourselves in that, in that theme already, and it's just a few days in the month. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this morning. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, because you are our Father. Thank you, Lord, for how you have been leading us since this service has started. Lord, as we look into your world today, there's something yet you want to speak to us. Lord, open our hearts. Open our minds and speak to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, the thing for the month is Jesus the way. Lord, may we never miss you in any junction of our life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we'll pray. So the theme is Jesus the way. And I was, as I was thinking about this theme, I remember a story, and I want you to listen very carefully. Several years ago, my friend and I, we were doing some research, and we went into a forest, very thick forest, to collect soil samples and litter samples. And you know some of these forests, when you go there, you, you know the beginning, but you don't know the end. You just see a path, just follow it, follow it, and follow it, and follow it, until we get to the thick of the forest. And when we got there, we started collecting samples. It was around 2 o'clock. By 4 or 5, we were done, and we looked up. Believe me, it was dark. Now, we needed to find our way out of the forest. We couldn't find our way. We walked around and around and around. We couldn't find our way. Honestly, I was scared. Because what was coming to my mind was, okay, we can't get out of this forest, thick forest. If we couldn't get out, what would we think about? So let's look at where we could sleep overnight, right? The starting of snakes, animals coming at us at night. And that just reminded me. When we say, you know, when we say the thing is Jesus the way. When a man loses his way, I'm very, very dangerous. Because at that point, you are clueless. At that point, you are afraid. At that point, you are like, you know, you are the only one in the world. Right? In the next slide. Pastor already gave us two very nice scriptures, and I'll tell you why I call them very nice. When I look at those two scriptures, John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way. What does that tell us? Look for any other, because that is the holy. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in Hebrews 1, 1 to 2, you might be wondering why the pastor gave us that other verse. It says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets and many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all faith, and through whom also he made the universe. 
who can give the way, who is qualified to give the way, other than the person that was there when the universe was created? Does that make sense? Jesus said, I'm the way. But anybody, if you are lost and you ask somebody, please, uh, I want to go to Regina. And the best Regina. <laughs> Which city is that one? Would you, would you continue to ask him? But Jesus was there. Proverbs chapter 8, you will see where Christ will say, I was there from the very beginning. When he drew the compass of the world, I was there. When he did this, I was there. And that's what qualified Jesus to show the way. So when he said, I'm the way, believe him. You know, sometimes we try to, during the university days, you know, when you have all of these, you know, they currently have an ASU strike in Nigeria as we are speaking. In those days, those ASU strikes, some of us use it for something productive. And I started saying, I don't want to be a Christian just because my parents are Christian or because somebody preached to me. I want to be a Christian because I had an encounter. And I also want to be a Christian because I know what the other books are saying. So at that time, I picked up another book. I picked up another book in English version and I read it. But you know, the more I read it, the more I loved my Bible. Do you know why? Because you could see that every other book will never give you assurance. Every other book will never give you assurance. Look at that certainty. I am the way. I am. He didn't say that, well, maybe there could be some other ways and you can try. He said, I am going to my father. So that where I am, you can be also. Jesus was so sure. Friends, when I completed that book, I was laughing because I said, and that's why I love what the choir, the Sunday said, no going back, no going back. Because when I saw, I, this is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So what does this way mean for us as believers? There are four contexts, there may be more, but a few contexts I, you know, the Lord helped me to, to see. When we say Christ is the way, four contexts. The first one is that he gave us access to the Father. He gave us access to the Father. I've shared this here before, something that happened a long time ago, and I told a professor of mine, I said, God told me, and he said, <laughs> how can God tell you? And exactly what God said was exactly what happened. And I'm sure many of us have had experiences and encounters with God, where God spoke to us, right? And, you know, Paul was going somewhere, he said, they were saying, to an unknown God. Many people are serving a God they don't know. But the God that we serve is a God that is very practical. If you want to walk with him, he will walk with you. You will have an interesting experience with him. I read a book several years ago, Mary Fo, uh, dear to call him father. He was practically explaining how he was working with God step by step. And he was saying, working with God is a journey, an interesting journey. If anybody decides to work with God, God will work with you. You will have experiences that you can't even explain. So the first dimension of this way is him granting us access to the Father. Pastor was sharing maybe on Tuesday or the other day about when people, you know, when the, uh, the priests in those days, when they are in the temple, you see they attach something, right? So that if he messes up and he's dead, they will pull him out. When people want to talk to God, they needed to go through a third party. But God has granted us access. Friends, use that access. Use that access. Think of this. Justin Trudeau gives somebody his card. Maybe something happened. Maybe the person helped save Justin Trudeau's daughter or son, or whatever. And say, you know what? I'm so happy with you with what you did today. Honestly, I don't know what to do, but I'm giving you this card. Use it. And after 10 years, you never used it. And you saw Justin Trudeau again and said, I helped your son the other day. You said you are going to help me. So yes, I said that. But you never helped me in 10 years. 
And he said, well, I gave you an access, but you never used it. I never got a call from you. But Jesus said, I have the way. He said, I am granting you access to the Father. So that what kind of privileges I have with the Father, you can have such and exact same privileges. Remember, the Bible said, the greater things would they do. Did the Bible say that? Greater things. So Christ was saying, if I am the way, I am granting you equal access to my Father. And my challenge for every one of us today is that how are we using that access to the Father? Colossians 121, once you were alienated from God and were hostile in your minds because of your ego deeds, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy from blemish and blameless in his presence. We have access. Father, we have confidence through the blood of Jesus to come into the place where you are. To come into the place where you are. Do you know that at times the battle supply will raise strong? What you just need to do is just say, get me somewhere. Just get me a corner to, to connect to the Father. Get me a corner. Look at what happened. Jesus, John chapter 11. Uh, what's his name? Lazarus died. Jesus didn't even come on time. But when he came, what happened? Something happened. And look at the prayer he even prayed. Simple prayer. Access to the Father. A lot of things that are waiting for us. A lot of things that are waiting for us to hope us. There are a lot of things waiting for us to open. Let's use this asset. There are depths in him that we, have, we may not have even uncovered. God is saying, if I am the way and you are going through this way, connect with this access. And I will show you great and mighty things. The, Bible says, the secret things belong to the Lord. But those things he has revealed to us, they are for us. Our the secret belongs to him. I would say the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him. He's waiting for us to have the access. In the second one, on the slide, I said there are four dimensions. The second one is direction. Isaiah 53, 6, he said, we all like sheep have gone astray. Isaiah 53, 6. Each one has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Direction is one of the critical components of the way. If when a man gives his life to Christ, he might not even know, I don't even know what my life is all about. You might feel like that. But once you get born again, once you connect to the way, you have direction for life. When people wake up and they just feel lethargic, you know, one of the things. The difference between a man that understands his direction and a man that doesn't understand his that A man that doesn't understand his direction, his purpose, even he might be going through challenges. But when he wakes up, he wakes up excited. Do you know why? Because he knows. He knows where he's going. He knows that some of those things he's going through, they're even part of the training. They are part of what God will use. I was reading a story this morning, uh, early this morning. Somebody, a lecturer, told a student and said, the student questioning in class, and the lecturer said, you will never amount to anything, and I will make sure you don't. He was in first class, and he said, I will make sure you don't finish the first class, and I will follow you to the, to the rest of your life. Some of you might not believe it because you grew up in Canada, but some people that grew up in places, they know it's possible. And so he couldn't make a, two, uh, a first class, one, and even when they posted him, he made sure that he wanted Lagos. He said, no, you're not getting Lagos. You are going to the northern part of the country. And they posted him there. And he was even telling him, you have got your posting, right? It was there, he realized, so it was him. But you know how God does things? Very beautiful story. I probably will share it on our, on our uh, WhatsApp. Do you know that God was just orchestrating, was pushing him, was pushing him towards his destiny? He got to the northern part of the country where he was stabbing, he repaired a computer for somebody. He didn't know that that person was a big person. And eventually they gave him a very big job. 
Eventually, they sent him to America to go and study. Eventually, he became so big in America. Eventually, he was the one even organizing funding for African professors. Eventually, he was the one that even brought this professor to the U.S. Eventually, he even knew his name. Eventually, he knew that I was going to meet him there, and they met. Eventually, he was speaking in that same place. And after he spoke, people, you know, clapped, and he went to the professor and said, do you remember me, sir? The man looked away and said, well, you said I would not want to anything, but do you know that the ticket that brought me here? <laughs> Child of God understands that whatever I go through in life does not matter. In as much as I stay connected to the way, if I stay connected to the way, nothing. Fear a child of God, believe me. Fear a child of God. When people do bad things to children of God, I say, be careful. Because some people have connected themselves to God, that when they sigh, Heaven stand at a lot. They just said they have not even said anything. They will, they have not caused that person. Say, oh, are you going to cause me? They are not even causing. They just said, Heaven, sir. <laughs> Somebody is making my life difficult. I am a child of God. And the angels, 24 angels, they just stood. Father, what do we do? There is so much privilege in the way when we understand the way that we are walking. So much privilege, but we don't assess it most times. Most times we, 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 we look at ourselves as every other person. We are unique. We have a royal priesthood, a holy nation created to fulfill what God has mandated for us. Salvation, and that's the, the most, even the most beautiful of them all, salvation. I've seen very pe many people that are nicer than me, honestly. As I was growing up as a younger person, they are nice, very humble, very <laughs> morally. But it's not about the heart. It's about whether you have found a way or not. Because the Bible says, look at what it says, neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name or ever given among men whatever you must be saved. When Jesus said, I'm the way, he's saying, I am the way to salvation. It doesn't matter how nice you are. It doesn't matter how, you know, well brought up you are. If you do not have Jesus, you do not have the way to heaven. You do not have the way to heaven. Friends, appreciate what you are. If you are not born again, connect to him. Give your life to him. And if you have given your life to him, stay in that way. Don't let anything push you out of the way. Nothing. Don't let anything push you. And the last one, I'll talk about access. I'll talk about direction, salvation. The last one is solution. Solution. Somebody says solution. Solution. We all need one solution or the other. Is that not true? A woman... Who earns $5,000? Pardon me, I'm bringing it to a contemporary world. She works as a dental assistant in a Thornbridge, uh, Thornbridge Dental Association. She earns $5,000. But she has an issue in her life. She pays doctors $4,800 every month. Is that life? It's tough. But she has an issue. She has gone change doctors from the ones in downtown to the ones in Stonebridge here, but all the same. And she met with Jesus. And she just told us, if I can just touch the hems of his garment. And he, he didn't even touch, Jesus didn't even know. He touched the hem of his garment. And what happened? Solution came. And that issue of blood for 12 years caught right now and then. What is that telling us? There is solution in Christ. There are challenges we we'll go through. Friends, connect with Jesus. He will do it. He will do it. There have been testimonies of things Jesus has done. Our mommy was sharing the other day. Maybe she has even forgotten that I said that I said doctor's report. They prayed about it, and you know, it happens. And I'm sure if I'm asking every one of us, there have been things that Jesus has done in our life. And that's why when we when they say testimonies, 
The Bible said they overcame him by what? The the Amen. When we share testimony, we encourage. Maybe she wouldn't even remember that. I remember that. That's the way it happens. After our first child, they said, oh, the other one, like, maybe, no, maybe there won't be other children after the first one. But after them, we have two more. There's nothing God cannot do when we see him truly the way he is. Solution. He can bring solution to our life. Maybe it does even for us, people around us. Amen. As I begin to go towards the other part of the message, what is our response? We need to hold fast to the way. Tell your neighbor, say, hold fast. Hold fast, hold fast to the way. We all know the way. We know the benefits of the way. We have connected with the way. But we need to hold fast to the way. And I saw this story as I was meditating about this. And honestly, it made me sober. When you read the Bible, you read Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians. Where are those places? Anybody want to try? Where are those places? Turkey, Turkey and Greece, somewhere between Philippi was in Greece, Colosse, not of, uh, let's just say Turkey, Greece around that area. Most of those things, beautiful. When you read the Bible, read the Ephesians, you're like, wow, this church. In fact, the Bible in Revelation chapter two, they got significant mention. When John was in the highland of Patmos, they got significant mention to the angel of the church in Ephesus. Right? We know the story. Look at what it says. So the angel of the church in heaven says, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deed. God was, it was a prophecy. God was warning that church. Say, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. Honestly, if you have read the church history and all of that, they actually persevered. They actually went through a lot. A lot of people come in with false teaching. They stood their ground. No. When people are saying, well, the, you know, the African bishops, when they were talking about the issue of uh, gay and the African bishops said, no, we're not going to, you know, you know, they were like that. And some bishops said, well, we are in the new world and all of that. They were defending the truth. That was the church. Ephesians. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. That you have protected those who claim to be opposed to but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured. They have even endured hardship. And I have endured hardship for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the law you had at first. That's all of those in the deed. He was saying they had forsaken their first law. And he was saying this is crucial because if you don't wake up, something may happen. Consider how far you are falling. Repent and do the things you did at first. What are the things we did at first? When we got born again, we were joyful in the Lord. Things are happening. People persecute us. You say, hey, I'm even happy that I'm persecuted for the Lord. I'm even happy. Some people who are beheaded for their faith, I'm just persecuted. I was denied my right. That's okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But he says, Repent and do the things you did before. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from his place. In fact, another version says, I remove your place among the churches. And when you now juxtapose this with the current reality, look at the current reality. In 2016, survey by Ipsos intervened 17,180 adults across 22 countries, found that Islam was the dominant. This time that this was said, Islam was born 560 AD. All this time that we are talking about, there was no Islam there. Those places were the places we call Christian, you know, those places where the believers were called Antioch. I mean, we were called uh, uh, Christians in Antioch. They were in those areas. But look at what happened. Islam was the dominant religion in Turkey. And head to by 82% of the total population. Religiously unaffiliated people comprise 13%. Why 
Only 2% were Christians. According to a religious city poll conducted in Turkey, 89 said they are Muslim. 4.5% believe in God, but did not belong to any organized religion. What am I bringing out? When we notice that we are fainting, just like he said to them, when we notice that our first love in the way is, is we are getting detached, reconnect back to the way. Tell your neighbor, say, reconnect back to the way. That was what he was asking them to do, reconnect back to the way. But he did not. And today is very painful. As I begin to round off this morning, in the next slide, I need to defend the way. This month, like the pastor has announced, Jesus the way. We need to defend the way in our individual lives, in our family, in our city, in our province. Defend the way. How do we do that? Matthew, I mean, Luke 22, 23. You know, you were talking about Peter. I said, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. The only way we can do it is if our own faith does not fail. We strengthen ourselves. Because if our faith fails, how do we strengthen our faith? Then? How do we strengthen our nation? There was something that was said a long time ago. The Queen of England said, I fear the prayer of John Knox. I mean, I've read that. More than three battalions of the army of, of Britain. John, John, yes, Scotland. Scotland. Thank you, sir. I fear the prayer of one man sitting in his corner. He said, I fear more than three battalions. Those are people that understood that they can hold the destiny of their nation, of their communities. So what am I saying this morning? We need to defend the way in our individual life. Know what you believe. Others may. I cannot. There will be temptations that will come across our way. Somebody said, well, we are, we are looking for somebody to fill this position, but, you know, personally, I don't like all these people that call themselves Christians. And you're like, <laughs> I'm going to hide the part I'm a Christian just for the job. No. Believe me, you might lose that job. But you are defending the way when you don't. I'm not saying everyone will carry, we go, we carry Bible. Now I'm not going to say it, but I'm saying in situation when we have to stand for the truth, we must not give in. We must stand for what we believe. We must stand for what we believe. We must stand for what we believe. And incidentally, something happened yesterday, and we we're talking, and I will see that. You know, a lot of times we say in Canada you cannot uh, um, preach or do this, but there's no rule or laws in Canada that stops a person from declaring the faith they practice. Really. And that's why you see people that are atheists. They are proud to say, I'm an atheist. So if an atheist say I'm an atheist, a believer is a believer. Are we following me this morning? Yes, sir. We should stand for what we believe. Maybe there's a family member that is not yet giving his life to Christ. Let's hold on. Let's keep defending the way and say, I'm prophesying. It might be an errant child. I read this story, very nice story. A woman whose child left the home and has been praying for this child and said, come back to Jesus. The child just left at 16 or 17 or so, something like that, left home. And this woman was praying every night and said, I know what you told me about this child. You will come back home. The child came home after 17 years or so. And when she came home, she met the door open and she met the mother on the rocking, rocking chair. She said, Lord, my child, you will bring her back home. And the child was crying and said, Mommy, so you think what I've been doing for 18 years? He said, Yes, because I know I am defending the way. And I know one day you will come back home here. The child just started crying. So, so as I was living my life, my mother was on her knees praying for me every night. No wonder. Mercy found me back home. Defending the way in our individual life, in our family, in our society. We see this happening in our society we don't like. Let's, as a church, as a people, stand up and say, no, we don't have said this. We pray things to happen because we have known the way. 
After I round up this morning, that scripture says, I look for someone who will stand in the ground, but I find none. May the Lord find us when he's looking for someone. As I round up in the next few two, three minutes, how do people lose the way? I was asking the question, how do people lose the way? And the story that Christ mentioned gave us, gave a lot of things house. I want to spend time and we know the story. See that the parable of the, of the, of the seed and the sower. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, friends, there will be trouble and persecution because of the word we are hearing. As the team has come out for this man, Jesus the way, there will be things that will come and challenge what you have had. But are you going to stand and say, this is what I believe? And believe me, if you stand, honestly, <laughs> there's, there's a promotion, a victory ahead. He said, when trouble or persecution comes because of the world, they quickly fall away. The next thing, he said, those other ones said, the worries of this life. Worries of this life. Time will not allow me to go, but I just want to mention those things. So, worries of this life. The deceitfulness of wealth and the desire of other things come in and choke the world. But he said there are some that produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times. What we want you to do and hide to do in the month of August is to go out there and produce food because we have known the way. You want us to live a life of impact. Every day you are making impact in the life of other people. That is the expectation of God. Next slide as I round up. One more slide and then before I ask the pastor to come forward. How do we stay connected to the way? Three ways. And I'll be very fast. Three ways. Number one, occupy till I call. Tell your number, say occupy till I call. Occupy till I come. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And I said to them, occupy. You know, we came back from vacation and we joined prayer, uh, the Zoom prayer meeting. And I was like, I think I was like, ah, this verse is, uh, is new. I said, bless God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Occupy till I come. Wherever you find yourself as a child of God, please occupy. Not because the church needs people. Not because the church, but because as you are doing it, you are also helping yourself. You are strengthening yourself. Occupy it like all. Find make sure you are busy. Busy for the Lord. Not just in the church. Even your personal ministry. Your personal things that the God has spoken to you. Make sure you are occupied. Number two, stay hungry for his presence. When the devil gets out hunger from the life of the child of God, believe me, it might be the efficient story. Hunger, make sure. Look at Moses here. I was always asking myself, what is Moses? Moses had encountered God. He had, he had moved to a level that you can say, let me relax now. Let me relax. Nothing to do anymore. But look at what he was saying. If I found favor in yourself, let me know your ways. And I was asking myself, a man that had, that had faith God, that had experienced so many things, he was still hungry. He was still asking. He was still hungry. I was watching a video the other day. Somebody was leading uh, a worship somewhere, and you know, the pastor sat in front, and people were dancing. The pastor just sat down. The church where everybody, they just sat down. I was just like, why can't they participate in the worship? But now there are big men and women here, you know, and I was asking myself, I said, God, help me. Do you know why I'm saying that? We should never get big. Because however big we are, you know, it's nothing. We should always be hungry. We should always, we should not say, oh, God has blessed me so much now that we will now go to a church once in a month. That's it. You know, we should never stay hungry for his presence and last thing, continue. We are going to read that as we rise up on our feet to pray this evening. Continue in fellowship and prayer. You see, we call for prayer on Friday, call for prayer this and that time. It's, it's spiritual exercise. Spiritual exercise. And when you see a church that they, there's no prayer, there's no word, believe me, it's a problem. And when you see a lie too, it's the same. 
So he says, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, those who were embraced this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to believers that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. And I want us to rise up this morning as we sing this hymn. I always like to be with him. Do you know why? Hymns are powerful. Sometimes you just look at him as I, I, I also call the pastor forward, but look at this thing. We are going to sing first and second, the last and second, I hope. But before we sing the first and last, let's read. I want to read the second and third to you. Oh, let me feel the near me. Choir, you may have to help me with that. Choir, people. Oh, let me feel the near me. The world is ever near. I see the signs that dazzle, the tempting sun I hear. My foes are ever near me, around me and within. Uh, but Jesus draw down nearer and shield my soul from sin. Oh, let me hear this speaking accent, clear and still. About the storm of passion, the moments of self will all speak to reassure me, to hasten or control. Oh, speak and make me listen, thou guardian of my soul, the one that shows me the way. We are going to sing first and last answer. Oh, Jesus, I promise. To stab This morning, Lord, give me grace to follow. Following the Lord will help us to come to the point of persuasion. We're talking about defending the way, standing for the way, walking in the way. I want you to speak to the Lord this morning that God will give you grace to follow. And God will bring you to the point of persuasion. Brethren, we quake. We go out of the way. We begin to pursue other things when we are not persuaded. I want you to speak to the Lord this morning. Please help me. Help me. Give me grace. Give me grace to follow. Add after you. And give me grace to be persuaded. To walk in the way. To stay with the way. And to defend the way. In the name of Jesus. Brethren, some mornings you wake up, you may not feel like praying. Sometimes you will want to take a decision. You may not feel like asking the Lord about it. 
But it's your persuasions at such times that will make you to still wake up in the morning, even when you don't feel God's presence around you. For you to understand He is there and still make you to show up. It is that persuasion that will make you to choose, even when other things seem easy to do. But you know there is a way that is not convenient, which is the straight path, that will make you to choose that straight path that is not convenient. It is persuasion. So Lord, talk to God. Lord, persuade me. Help me to follow to persuasion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to say this now. Overnight, the Lord spoke to me. And I'm going to tell you what the Lord spoke to me overnight. He said, maybe one or two, I don't know who you are or who the person is, but I know it was a specific word for somebody. Yeah. Now, what the Lord told me is that some of us, are, that person is still involved in self-help. Self-help. Precisely in that vision, what I saw was somebody still doing incisions. I mean, you know, wanting to support himself or herself. And the Lord said to me that the person should realize that where he or she is, he brought him there. So, where God has, where you are now, God brought you here. And God said to me to say to the person that what you are trying to achieve, we have, we have an exact opposite of what you plan to achieve if you go on on that way. So I want us to pray. If you are the person, I want you to speak to the Lord. That God will help you to not to go out of the way. Talk to God. Lord, I yield myself to you. Help me on. Lord, today I yield, I stop all self-help. And I choose to walk in your ways. I want you to speak to the Lord. And every one of us, let's talk to God. Say, Lord, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Lord, I yield myself to you. Please lead me on. Lead me on. Lord, lead me on. In your way. Lord, I see. The Bible says, let us labor to enter into his rest. The Bible says that he that enter into that rest, cease from his works. Lord, I cease, I stop from my own works today. Walking in the way means we stop on our own mentality and we pick on the mentality of Jesus Christ. We pick on the way Jesus wants things to be done. So speak to the Lord. Say, Lord, I pick on your way. I pick on your way concerning every aspect of my life in the name of Jesus. And I want us to lift up a pastor that the Lord has used to speak to us today. A brother and pastor, let's pray to him. Let's pray for him that the Lord will help him, will keep him in the way. The Lord will help him to keep his family in the way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Daddy, thank you for this morning and thank you for speaking to us. Lord, we thanksgiving we receive these words and we pray for grace to put them to practice in our lives in Jesus' name. As we go through this month, Jehovah God, and more words come with respect to Jesus the way. Give us understanding. Send men to us that so we have the fullness of your mind about this topic this month in Jesus' name. Your son, you used to bless us. Bless him your return. Keep him in the way. And let all be well with him in Jesus' name. Thank you, righteous man. In Jesus' name, we are praised. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please let me stay for a moment. We are going to go to Thanksgiving now. I just want to apologize ahead of time. You see, we found out that Thanksgiving Sundays like this, we need to actually extend time. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to take a little bit more time. We're going to go into Thanksgiving for a short period, and then we'll round up, and then we'll be on our way. Amen. Praise the Lord.